Welcome back to Biomechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more future videos and notifications. So in this playlist, we're going to be working several biomechanics problems. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, three different joints mainly. We're going to be looking at the elbow joint. We're going to be looking at the knee joint with the quadriceps. And then we're also going to be looking at the shoulder joint. And we're going to start with the biceps problem, which deals with the elbow. Um, that's usually the type of problem for torque that they'll introduce in an introductory biomechanics course. And we start with this kind because it's probably the simplest to understand. And we're going to work several different problems uh, with the same setup, and we're going to add a few different things every time. Now, before we go into the problem, let's think about what's at play here. Okay, so first of all, right here, this vertical line represents the humerus. So that's my proximal bone in my arm and everything associated with that. This horizontal line right here is going to represent my forearm. Of course, everything associated with that, bones, muscles, tissues, all that. And then, of course, I have my hand here and maybe I'm holding some kind of weight in it. Okay. Now, in this problem, the way I have it working is I've got my elbow flexed at 90 degrees. Okay, and I'm just holding it there isometrically. So basically what I have is a setup where I've got my elbow flexed at 90 degrees and maybe some weight in my arm like this. Okay, and really it's my elbow flexors that are actually going to be supporting all of this weight in my forearm, including the bones, the muscles, the tissue, and then of course the weight that I've got in my hand. Now when we say elbow flexors, um, there's a lot of elbow flexors that we have. We're generally going to neglect all of them except for the biceps brachii, and you'll see that in the problems that you work. And I also mentioned in the forearm, we've got a lot of stuff here as well. We've got the bones, we've got the radius and the ulna, we have all sorts of tissue in here, even wrist flexors, extensors, your supinator, pronator muscles. Um, we can account for all that weight. Um, in this problem, we're going to neglect that. Okay? Uh, we're also going to neglect the weight of the hand. Um, that would normally be included in the weight of the forearm. And so the only weight we're going to be concerned with in this problem, so this is about as simple as you can get, but a good place to start, we're only going to account for the weight that I'm going to be holding in my hand. Okay? And so we've got our elbow. It's going to be flexed to 90 degrees, just held there isometrically. And what we're asked to calculate is the force that's going to be necessary to be exerted by the biceps in order to hold this arm at 90 degrees. Now, again, we can add in more weights later on, but we're just gonna start at 90 degrees. And the reason we wanna start at 90 degrees is that's the simplest case we can get. We could also start at 30 degrees, we could do 60 degrees. 90 degrees is the easiest because it teaches you the basic concepts and avoids any trigonometry. We're not gonna have any sines or cosines necessary when we do it like this. So let's just get the basic idea of how we're going to work this problem, okay? So first of all, we got several things here, okay? We got a weight in our hand. That weight is going to exert a force downward, okay? So that's F sub W. That's the force due to this weight. And just understand, depending on your class, they may use a different variable to represent this. I like to use Fs for forces and Ds for distances and also keep it consistent. So here's the force due to this weight that I'm holding. And it's a weight, so it's pointed downward. Okay. We've also got the force due to the biceps. Now that's going to be directed upward, okay? because if I got a force that's exerted downward and I had nothing exerted upward, my arm would just flop downward. So I have to have a force exerted upward also to balance this downward force. So the force due to the biceps is exerted upward. Also, my elbow itself, which could basically be represented by a point right there, the elbow is the axis of rotation. So not only do I have these forces, but I have a distance between the force and the axis of rotation. So for example, uh, the distance between the force due to the weight and the axis of rotation, I'm going to represent by d sub w, distance to the weight. If I'm looking at the distance uh, to the force exerted by the biceps, it's much shorter. Okay? It's always going to be that way. The bicep actually inserts on the radius very close to the elbow joint. And so I'm going to call that D sub B, distance of the bicep. Okay? The nice thing about working these problems is other than adding certain things in, like the weight of the forearm and changing the angle of the elbow, everything is pretty much going to be the same every single time. You're going to work the same problem the same every single time. Now what do we do with all this? 
Okay. Well, we've got here this formula for torque. Sometimes I'll call it moments, uh, depending on uh, how your instructor teaches it. I use torque. It's the same thing as a moment. We represent it by the Greek letter tau, so people will just use T. But in any case, a torque is equal to the force times the distance from the axis of rotation. Okay? So a force just goes vertically, horizontally in one direction. However, a torque is the rotary component of that. So we know that if we're holding a weight in our hands and we contract our bicep, it's not just translating upward and downwards. We're actually rotating about the elbow joint. So the torque is actually the part of the force that's actually producing rotation. And so what we have to do in a problem like this is we have to balance all the torques. Okay? So we're going to have multiple torques. So we're going to say that the sum of those torques is equal to zero. Okay? Now let's think about this. We're going to have a torque due to this weight, right? the weight in the hand. So let's say we've got a torque due to the weight. We're going to add it onto the torque due to the biceps brachii. Let's call that tau sub b, okay? And the sum of those two things has to be zero, okay? So what is each individual torque? Well, it's a force times a distance. So the torque due to the weight is just the, the force due to the weight times the distance that the weight is from the axis of rotation. And we add on to that the force due to the biceps times the distance that the biceps are from the axis of rotation, add those together and we get zero. Now, of course, the problem that you get, you're gonna have some numbers here. So for example, I give here that the distance that the bicep is from the axis of rotation, that is the elbow, is three centimeters. The distance that the weight is from the axis of rotation, so this distance right here, that's gonna be 30 centimeters. That's always gonna be a much bigger number than than for the muscle distance. And then I'm giving you that the mass of the weight is 10 kilograms. Okay? Now, when we're given a mass like this, we need to convert that into Newton units. The way we do that is we multiply this by 9.8. Some people use 9.81. We're going to just simplify that. So if we want to figure out what this is in Newtons, take this and multiply by 9.8. And when we do that, we're going to get 98 Newtons. Okay. Um, also, you'll notice these distances are in centimeters. Okay. Um, as long as they're the same units, so as long as both of them are centimeters or both of them are millimeters, they could both be in angstroms for all we care. As long as they're in the same units, you can just leave them that way. Okay. If one of these was in meters and one was in centimeters, you would have to convert one of them to the other so that they match up. These are both centimeter units, so we're actually covered. However, if your instructor wanted you to convert these into meter units, um, all you would do is divide by 100. Okay? So dividing by 100, this would get me 0.03 meters. This one would be 0.3 meters. Okay? Um, again, there's a tenfold difference between these, so there should also be a tenfold difference between those. Okay? Now we have all the information we need. All we need to do is plug in the numbers and solve for the force exerted by the biceps brachii, which is generally what you're going to do every single time in these uh, problems. All right, so we've got the force due to the weight. We just calculated that from the mass because we can't use kilogram units. We have to use force units. So this is actually going to be 98 newtons. Okay. Um, also notice that this force is exerted downward. So by definition, we have to throw a negative sign in front of that one, okay? We can throw it inside the parentheses. Um, some people might actually like that. But whenever the force is exerted downward, it has to have a negative sign. When it's exerted upward, it'll have a positive sign. So this is a weight, it's downward. It would tend to pr uh, produce a downward torque, okay? If we allowed it to be the only force there. So it's negative. The distance between that force being exerted and the axis of rotation, dw, is 30 centimeters. Now again, some instructors may like that you put it in meters, but again, if both of these units are identical you're, and it's consistent, you're actually good to just put centimeter units. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is going to be 30 centimeters. And then plus, okay, force due to the biceps. We don't know that. That's our unknown. 
So we're just going to keep that as force of the biceps times the distance that the biceps are from the axis of rotation, that is the elbow joint. We got that as three centimeters. And we're going to add all that together, and that should give us zero. Okay. Now, this is just simple algebraic manipulation at this point. Okay. So what I can do is I can actually, this is negative, all this over here, I can add it to the other side. Okay. So on the left side, I'll still have this business right here. So I'm going to have, actually start moving it over here, we're going to have force of the biceps times 3 centimeters equals, well, if I add this stuff over here to the right side, just an algebraic manipulation, then I'll have on the right side equals 98 newtons, positive now because I added it over, times 30 centimeters, okay? Now, I don't even need a calculator to do this, but the way I would solve it algebraically is I would divide both sides through by 3 centimeters. So this would cancel over there. And that would isolate the force due to the biceps on the left side. So now I would have force due to the biceps equals, then I have all this business over here. Now, you could throw this into a, a calculator to figure out what this is pretty easily, but notice 30 over 3. Centimeter units cancel. 30 over 3 is 10. So this would just be 98 newtons times 10, or 980 newtons. Okay? And it would be 980 newtons directed upward. Okay? Now remember, the force due to the weight is always downward. That's why it was uh, negative when we first plugged it into the problem. Okay? So if we have a torque that's being produced that's going to be in the negative direction, that means to counterbalance that, the opposing torque, which is through the biceps, is going to have to be oriented upward to balance it so that we're in static equilibrium because we're just holding it there isometrically. Okay? So this 980 newtons would have to come out positive. Sure enough, it does. If it came out negative, we did something wrong because this has to be positive. First of all, the muscle's pulling upward, but it has to be positive to balance this. Also, whenever you work any bicep problem and you calculate the force, you're going to expect for this number to be quite a bit higher than the force due to the weight. Okay? Even if you factor in the weight of the forearm as well, this number better be much higher. Okay? And that's because the biceps are an inefficient muscle. They're a third class lever, and they insert very close to the axis of rotation. Whenever that happens, they have to exert a much higher force to generate the same amount of torque. So because the weight is distributed very far from the axis of rotation, it's going to have an advantage in producing a downward torque. The bicep is going to attach very close to the axis of rotation, therefore it will have a disadvantage producing torque. And so to get the same amount of torque at a low distance, you're going to have to have a huge amount of force generated. So um, this would be something I would expect given these numbers to have the force produced by the biceps being about 10 times higher than the force exerted by the weight itself. Okay? So hopefully this made sense. And in the next video, we're going to work the same problem, but this time we're going to take into account the weight of the forearm. And you're going to see that it's going to be worked very similarly, but we're going to have an extra number there to throw in. So make sure to join us then. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.